Good evening, a rare Saturday night edition of Mountain's Garage. The other day I was cleaning the top of my transmission rebuild bench, sorting out the parts and putting some outside in the storage container. Uh, all the while in the shadow of the broken Turbo 400 case that I broke a week ago and I'm still mad at myself about. Trying to see if there's a possible way I could use it. I had another transmission sitting here in the garage that I bought last summer, fall-ish. And the story on that is they thought the case lugs were broken and it kept popping the snap ring out. And I, I know it has a manual valve body. I can tell by the outside is a modulator plug. So who knows what was inside it. I haven't stripped it yet. And I'm pretty good when I get engines. I'll write down the mileage and where I got it from. And rear ends, either before or after I assemble them, I'll write down all the parts and stuff like that. But transmissions, I seem to have a knack, mostly because I have been around them so long. And I'm pretty good at remembering most of the history. So in this case, it was supposed to be in a mud truck and was missing second gear. And I thought to myself, if I could take the guts out of that, and put it in my case and somehow seal up the pump, it would be good enough for a couple of the rat rod type vehicles I'm gonna build that I'm not going very far. When I said that case was junk to me, I wouldn't put it in my twin turbo Nova and end up driving over the fluid, but if it was just in some rusty old hot rod that I wasn't probably gonna to leave the town with, it'd probably be okay. Probably have a cheap torque converter and you know a bunch of junk. So. That was my thought process, so I figured I'd strip this transmission and see what lie lay inside. A common theme in all my videos is I have no desire to trash anything or anybody. What we're going to find in this transmission, because when I'm filming this intro, I've already seen the inside. Uh, things were done wrong. Drastically wrong. However, this person was brave enough to dive in there and give it his or her best shot. The only mis the biggest mistake they made, not the only mistake, but the biggest mistake is they didn't spend $30 or somehow get enough information to find where to put what. They ruined this transmission almost completely for no good reason, but that's just the way it is. So here we go. This is what I found in the funhouse. Another day, another transmission. I threw this up on the stand, started stripping it, only got as far as taking the pan off. When I thought I should film it just in case this turns into something interesting in a video. Uh, while I'm scanning over here, I actually cleaned my bench up a little bit. I took, organized a lot of the parts, put them outside in one of the containers. I left a couple good forward drums, or round back direct drum, and the only spare pump I got laying around and I'm ready to strip something else I got a few miscellaneous parts left to work through but my working conditions have improved so this turbo 400 I bought for a hundred dollars and the story is it was in some kind of mud truck it has a manual valve body I could see that when I bought it got the modulator plug and it kept losing second gear, it kept popping the snap ring out of the case, is what I was told. So, what are we going to find when we open it up? What did it have for parts? We're going to know here in a few minutes. Right off the bat, the oil is nice and clean. This is the pan, how I just took it off, other than the spare pine needle. So far, so good. A few visual clues. I usually try to piece some kind of scenario together in my head as to why I ended up, up with the transmission. Uh, the cool line fittings are missing. The two bolts where the linkage would have bolted on, the linkage bracket. Somebody had another transmission to swap into the vehicle because this one had a problem. And they had to steal a few parts off this one. That's my guess so far. Somebody did get crazy with silicone. You know how I feel about that, but hopefully it's only on the pan gasket. We can see how much that can let loose inside the transmission. I've seen that a lot. They put two washers on the filter bolt, 
but they put them both on the bottom instead of, I like to put them one on each side, but hey, it saves me from taking two more washers out of the bin. Let's keep stripping. I was asked to show my pump removal method. I put a big screwdriver carefully under the pressure regulator on the back side of the pump. And I have, this is a snap-on 3 8 coarse thread slide hammer. Because that hole and that hole come threaded from the factory for that reason. If you have just a slide hammer, you can go back and forth a little bit over there, a little bit over here. But in this case, I pry and pop at the same time, and it comes right out. I removed the valve body. It has a gold separator plate, two gaskets that don't appear to be stock, and underneath it had this cut plug with three holes in it and a check ball on top. That modification is too exacting to be a random mistake. So obviously that was in whatever instructions came with the valve body. At this point, I hadn't determined what it was yet. I removed the rear servo. It has a lot of black debris. The rings were removed, the ceiling rings. So it's been off and modified because as I identified the valve body as a turbo action, I downloaded the instructions and that's one of the things they tell you to do. Written on the separator plate, Cheetah, that's Turbo Action Cheetah, and that 24141 is the part number. A quick internet search, and it's a reverse shift pattern, 65 and up Turbo 400, and all the modifications that should have been done. This valve body is still available. It's $333 at the big parts warehouses. Uh, I paid $100 for the transmission. We'll see if I got my money's worth. <laughs> I removed the center support bolt, which was loose, and chunks of aluminum came with it. This meant my case was probably junk. You can see the shoulder down inside is broken halfway off. So... That won't fly. That'll definitely lead to problems. If not immediately, down the road, you'll have a problem with second gear. So the case is junk, but I do get all the small parts to save. The pock and pawl, the shaft, everything I talked about in another, the other videos. And the ears are already trimmed off, and I can wash this case up and come up with a tail housing. And next time somebody wants to borrow my dummy case, I'll still have one here in the shop. Also forgot to mention while I was in the pan area, it has the stock filter on it. I pulled out the front pump, which I have not separated yet, but all things appear to be normal on it. It's probably usable. I should have stripped it apart before the video, but worst case scenario, it isn't any good, but probably it's okay. The Same with the forward uh, clutch drum. I haven't taken the piston out yet. But it all appears to be somewhat normal. The clutches, you can still read the part number. Same with the direct. Same with the intermediates. And the band is brand new. So somebody just slapped some new parts in it recently. So this is all reusable. Rebuild kits. You know, you still need gaskets and stuff. But, you know, those that probably represents $100. So if I'm tallying, if I was paying, you know, full price, we're up to like... 430 in value plus all these small pots add up like i say that shift shaft's 29 dollars new so you gotta maybe cut all this retail price in half to actual value but in this case i'm making myself feel better thinking it was worth the hundred dollars because trust me it is most any core is worth a hundred dollars i pulled out the direct drum and this is where things really headed south if you look at it it's got a groove worn into it where it's been hitting something. Odd. Sprag's still good, but it's a roller style, so it's nothing special. My first clue was there was a Torrington bearing outer piece that belongs in the lower unit sitting here. Nothing should be that high in the transmission. As far as the small Torrington bearings, the three three piece bearings that live down below in the lower unit. Shouldn't be up this high in the transmission. It was never dual fed. It's recommended in the instructions for a better 
two, three shift feel, it says, to remove this. However, that lip seal is in backwards. I didn't think it could happen, but I guess you can really put them in backwards because it's headed the wrong direction. So the direct drum was nothing special anyway, and it's toast. On the intermediate clutch pressure plate, they had the bevel snap ring that belongs in the center support in upside down. They had it like that. I guess they wanted the heavy duty snap ring and figured they'd just put a beveled one in there. It was still in there, but I'm not sure that's the best method. <laughs> and holding the center support in was the intermediate clutch snap ring stock size. On top of the center support were these two pieces of a Torrington bearing sitting right there. Now nothing goes right here. Your shaft stick up through. There's no need for anything to be here, but there it was. Surprisingly, the rest of the center support looks pretty good other than it needs a new bushing. I don't think it received any other damage. I'll double and triple check it, and I actually need a center support. I have a whole lower unit outside that's missing just that and the proper output shaft because it has a four-wheel drive output shaft, and I need a two-wheel drive shaft. So I'm still thinking I got a good deal. From here back, the reaction carrier, all the planets have pieces missing out of them. They're junk. The sun gear, same story. The sun shaft is questionable where it's been running through the barren of the center support. I don't know. I haven't written this one completely off yet, but probably a smart move just to toss it away. The main shaft is featuring a welded piece of a Torrington Baron. The other two pieces are missing, and that is frozen forever right there. It's welded itself right on there. On the back side against the output shaft, this one still spins. The other two pieces were where they belong in the end of the output shaft, but I can't get that off no matter how hard I pry. I'm not sure if I pry hard enough, but it will not just fall off. <sighs> And same story here, the planets are absolutely chunked. So, out of this lower unit, I believe I still have a good output shaft and a center support. And I have enough pieces to cobble together a complete lower unit. So, all is not lost back here, but it's tragic because things weren't assembled in the correct order. And this is a result when things stop moving around when they shouldn't. And for a transmission that must have been making a lot of metal in the pan, there isn't any. So it clearly has been cleaned or wiped out. And I don't understand the brand new clutches and band. But whatever. That's a Kevlar band. That's okay. This kit looks exactly like the ones I've used from Jags before. And to top it all off, in the bottom of the case, it had two rear end shims actually against the case where this belongs. And then it had the spacer. And then it had the tanged washer, which should be up against the output shaft, this way. And it was kind of cocked. <laughs> That's just the way it came out, just like that. I guess they were trying to take up some mysterious end play they had developed. Well, clearly things were jumping around in there. Whew. So when things are blown up this bad or worse, be careful what you reuse. And I will double and triple check everything. And I wouldn't put it in your transmission. I would try it in something that I know I'm not going very far in. But it's just not worth it. Parts, I can go buy another core for 100 or $200 that isn't blown up. And in the long run, it's money well spent. I've showed you how I, even I lay out all the lower unit parts in order. The three, this three, three piece Torrington Barons hidden in the lower unit. They're all a different part number. So it can get confusing. When you buy them new, they're labeled in the package where they go. That makes it pretty easy. But if you just throw them all in one spot and then try to remember which piece went with which, you got nine pieces. It's like a shell game. Things can go wrong. So 
I still, to this day, put them with the parts they belong with so I don't make that mistake. It doesn't matter how many you do, it's just easier. And there's only so many things you can remember. And the good old book will guide you which direction each of the three three-piece bearings need to face in the lower unit. Very helpful. You gotta love information. Speaking of information, in the video where I installed two CK Performance Transbrake valve bodies, and I mentioned that guy is really smart and has written a, a, a book or two, a friend of mine gave me volume one. It's fascinating. The uh, CM Kakonis, so CK, there you go, CK Performance. He mentions his website inside, but basically starts at the front of the transmission with the torque converter and goes piece by piece what everything does, both in theory and in pitches, so you can understand everything. I've only read the first couple chapters. Again, it doesn't matter how many you've done, how many you've built. This is good stuff, and I will read it cover to cover. And if I only get one tidbit that I didn't know, it's still one thing that I didn't know. So, it's Saturday night. You should be doing something more fun than watching me. <laughs> or not. All right, like, share, subscribe. Catch you next time.